Hello, everybody. In this video, I will show you why you're losing against the Karokan defense. Karokan is a great opening. That was also my opening when I first started playing chess, influenced by Capablanca. And if you look at YouTube terrain, there are so many videos out there that recommend you to play the Karokan defense. And there's a reason why. Because white players tend to go wrong in some of those key lines. They don't know how to react against Black's natural setups. They lose games, hence the reputation of Karo Khan. Today, these are changing. I will show you, first of all, why you are losing. And this will connect to our series on deep learning in chess. Because once you understand the reasons why you're losing, then you will fix that and you will have much longer retention and deeper learning of the information. Okay, so that's a multi-purpose video. Please watch it carefully as white players, as black, you can also learn lessons from it as the Karakam players, and we will continue from this, okay? E4, C6, D4, D5, advanced Karakam. That's a beautiful opening, I love it. It can teach us so many good things about openings, development, space advantage, king in the center, time, concept of time in chess. That's why I had a separate chapter about this advanced Karakam in my chessable course, Chess, Crime and Punishment. There I talk about neglecting time and development. I have witnessed so many times as a coach that people go wrong when it comes to understanding time element in chess, developmental element in the opening, right? Look at this variation with c5. Clearly, that's a sound strategic move for black, right? He wants to get a beautiful French position. He wants everything. Black wants to get the bishop outside of the pawn chain, challenge the center, get the knight to c6, play e6, develop all of his pieces and achieve a great French structure. So why should not allow this? And that's the reason why, for example, the best move for white is d takes c in this position or knight f3. White needs to speed up the development because black has lost time in the opening by making the same move, pawn move twice, right? Come on, black. You have the, I have the first move advantage, and on move three, you are making the C-pawn move again, right? So this is the trade-off. And here I want you to understand, right, why, for example, this move has drawbacks. But if you look at databases, if you look at amateur games, right, people play C3 like there is no tomorrow. Can you believe it? On Leech's database, amateur games, 51% of the times people go C3 against this move c5 and white is losing time in the opening white is letting black to achieve a beautiful french structure right look at those moves those moves are played all the time the bishop is just outside of the pawn chain black is getting ready for e6 white is losing more time and after this series of moves i will show you right black achieved a beautiful french structure already here Black has an edge in this position, advantage for Black, because Black has everything, challenging the center, the bishops are outside the pawn chain, the knight putting pressure on the central pawn on d4, and look at your pieces, they are still sleeping on the queen side, you do not show any activity, you gave time to Black, and that's exactly what he needed, right, in this position. He still needs, by the way, two moves to castle, but the white cannot punish the king in the center because of slower play, and now Black will have everything, a beautiful French structure, French and Karokan, they are sister and brother systems. Obviously, we should have some understanding of those typical pawn structures. And this is why you're losing as white against the Karokan defense, because you're going C3 in that moment, right? Like going back to that position, guys. You're going C3 here, and that causes catastrophes in the middle game. And now you understand why C3 is a mistake. And I want you to focus on the why question, right? The king is in the center, black needs gazillions of moves to be able to castle this king, and black is losing time in the opening. Thus, thus, more energetic approach is called for. Thus, when you look at master games, you see d takes c5 as the main move. It looks like a bad move, positionally speaking, right? Because why are you giving away the central pawn instead of keeping the pawn chain intact? Well, there's a very simple reason, because you don't want to give black time to consolidate and get everything he wants for example even to be able to get the pawn back blacks one of the main choices is actually e6 right if black really wants to get the pawn back asap then he should go e6 the problem is that now the bishop is blocked in by the pawn chain right and white already achieves its goal 
we don't give black a crazed, beautiful French structure, right? And if he does go on knight c6 here, if black still insists on having everything, right? Getting the French bishop outside of the pawn chain, now we'll say, no way. I'm not going to give you this pawn for free because after e6, hitting the pawn, white will say, no way, right? You will suffer for that. You will make black suffer for it. And look at this. That's the major drawback for black in the advanced car, right? His king side is not developed at all. Black needs time to solve his problems. And let's say after bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes e5, black regained the pawn, but still didn't solve his king problem. Bishop b5 check comes with tempo. And after this, you can just castle short and look at this, yeah? Every single piece is beautiful place. The bishop cannot develop by taking that pawn. And black is suffering from lack of development. And white is just in time, right? To open up lines in the center because the king is living here. You see how energetically white is playing this position, this middle game. Because black was losing time. And this was totally justified for white. You should make them pay for it, right? By capturing on c5, you say, no way. I'm not going to give you an easy hand in grabbing that pawn back with interest. So against c5, you are not going to play c3. That's clear. Knight f3 is also a good move, by the way, guys, right? Why don't we just develop our pieces and bolster our central structure? Let's say after knight c6, we can go bishop e3. We can also go c4, by the way, right? It's totally justified for white to open up the center because, the, again, black needs so much time to consolidate his king side, right? But let's say bishop e3, queen b6. My question is this. Should white go b3 in defending this guy or should white play more energetically in this position? You tell me. Given what you learned so far from this opening, what should white do in this position, folks? Yes, the best move is d takes c5. You are not giving time to black. You're not playing passively. You say, okay, come, you know, lose more time. Take my pawn on b2 and this will give white additional time to consolidate his advantage. And here, you see, he has to go e6 to be able to make use of his kingside structure, to be able to get the pieces out. The problem is this, right? The queen is already facing some issues. And here, white has great developmental advantage. Look at the queen being chased away. And the king has to already go to e7, by the way, because if you do this, then takes, takes, queen f7, it collapses, right? And you achieve your goal. It's a beautiful position for white. Who cares about the structure? People was, oh, look at my structure, right? Yo, weak pawns. Hey, you know, the king's safety is much more important than your weak pawn in this position. So the goal is to consolidate, is to rapidly develop your pieces, play for peace activity and coordination in return for small structural deficit for white. Coming back to this position, queen b6. Again, b3 is a very common mistake at lower levels. People just passively react to such moves. This gives black time to consolidate his bishop, the bishop is just outside the pawn chain, and black will go e6. Oh, another c3, by the way. Another terrible move, and black will go e6. And slowly, right, black is just getting the pieces out. Black will have no problems. Black, again, is a beautiful French structure, right? Everything is, is under fire. The bishop is outside the pawn chain, and the black king is not punished in the middle of the board because of passive play for white. So let's summarize today's lesson, folks. What is the gist? What have you learned today in this episode? It's not so much about Karo Khan theory memorization moves. It's much more about deeper processing and understanding why certain moves are huge mistakes. For example, a move like C3 in this position just doesn't speak to the requirements of the position. I want you to verbalize this. I want you to put in the words why this move is bad. Because only this way, right, you can have deeper processing and long-term retention of your knowledge. Otherwise, you go to a master game or you look at some random opening lines and you memorize, for example, that D takes C5 is the main line, right? But you have no idea why, right? Like, you you know that. You, let's say you memorize. Ah, okay, they go D takes C5. That's that's a theory. But you did not you really engage in deeper processing with this knowledge. You did not, for example, ask yourself, why the hell White is breaking the pawn chain like this. It looks like a ridiculous move at first sight, right? So what's the reason? You should be very curious of when you see such moves, guys, in your opening that seems to go against the principles, right? You should be curious. You should ask yourself the why question. And here in this video, I explain to you why this move is great for White, right? Because we don't lose time. We don't let Black to get everything, right? Get the bishop outside the pawn chain, get the pawn back with interest, right? This is what Black wants in this structure in Karo. And this you should prevent. 
and play actively. Use D4 scroll for your pieces. Isolate that pawn. Go with C4. Open up lines and play more actively against this king, which is placed in the center. Black will need so many moves to consolidate the king's side. And this is the right way to analyze and study chess openings. I am here to support you with this endeavor, folks. Please give me feedback, whether you like this video, whether I missed something, and whether you have similar experiences in the Karakan defense with black or with white. And hopefully, we are turning the tide from now on. Those Karakan players, they won't just, you know, put double exclamation marks after moves like C5. I've seen this. People put double exclamation marks after C5 because they assume at lower levels, white players won't know how to deal with this pawn move. But today, things are changing. You will have much better preparation against move C5. And most importantly, you will know why your moves are the best moves against this move. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next video on deep learning and opening, guys. Thank you so much.